So this is our poor man's lathe setup. It's the same drill as before, but we've put it on its side. Um, the way we have the wheel mounted in it is just as you saw it when it was vertical. Um, the, the, this, is, this locks up nicely though as it happens with the thread direction. We've set our drill up to its max RPM, which is about two and a half thousand. We figured that you wanted it as fast as possible, uh, so it's less likely to catch. Uh, the tool we're going to use is a surf form, which is uh, a bit like a file, but it's going to take it down nice and flat and nice and steady. Uh, the reason we're taking the size down is because the uh, model we're fitting on needs wheels of about 100 mil. So we're taking these down to about 90 mil total, so that once the tread is on, it comes back to 100 mil. Of course, if whatever you're doing isn't so critical for size you don't have to do this bit at all. Oh, one other thing, um, there's a possibility that uh, the tool can catch and throw itself forward which is why Ellis is wearing a safety glove. Right, let's turn it on. measure progress so I know how far to go. This is sitting at currently 96 millimeters. So we've got six mil to go, still quite a way to go. When we've taken it down to 90 mil, it'll look something like this one. Do you want to compare that with a full size one? Uh, yep, it's a full size one. So you can see more or less lined up the difference. and that's ready to go to the next stage. So here's the uh, finished article, now it's rubbed down and it's now around about 90 mil in diameter. What we're going to do next is take a regular bicycle tyre, we've gone uh, for a chunky one, cut it, which we've already done, and then I'm going to strip off the sidewall, leaving just the, the face tread, which we think is just about the right width for what we're going to do. I'm going to strip that back at least enough to get round the wheel. A bit awkward when you've got a big wheel to, to get play around. a wheel guitar. <laughs> a guitar? Oh. Really terrible fun. We figured out that we're going to need around about 30 centimetres of tread to get around each wheel, so we should get enough for six from this. We've now cut that out, we've taken the sidewalls off, and we've cut it to a length which is a little bit longer than the circumference of the wheel. And so what we're going to do now is get that round the wheel and very simply we're going to screw it to the wheel using small screws and I've chosen a screw type which has got a big head on it. I'll just zoom in on that, get the focus right. And because the tread of the wheel is deep, the heads of the screws will be buried within the tread. We've got, uh, we think it's a 1mm drill bit um, and we're going to make a tap hole this is a lot smaller, there it is, this is a lot smaller than the core of the screws but we found that any bigger and into this thin nylon we don't seem to get much grip. So I'm just going to line this up. Go for the biggest hole. Make yeah, sure. these, the, the tread of the tyre um, seems to have a natural... Here we go. Pattern. Don't want to tighten down too far because the uh, thread will pull out of the hole underneath. That's about right. So each one of these wheels happens to have 20 screws in it, so we'll come back once we've made 19 other holes and 19 other screws just like that. Last couple of screws going in. You can see that we've left the tyre overhanging the wheel in this case because we've got enough space on the robot for that to be the case and it may not make much difference in terms of uh, how much grip it's got but it looks way cooler yeah, than a broad, a thick tread. <laughs> we've got uh, five centimetre wide wheels 
it just adds something to the way the machine looks. And we've not tried to glue the rubber to the nylon, we've not found anything that does that very satisfactorily. We tried silicon in a previous attempt, silicon kind of the stuff kind of stuff you get in bathrooms and things. That did have some success, but for the for the amount of stick that it gives you, it's really not worth it. And and most other people that have made their wheels in this way don't seem to bother, they just use screws like we are. You can see we've just finally trimmed the rubber off so that the join is even. We've left the um, uh, tips of the screws inside. I mean, we prefer cut them off, but it's, it's awkward to cut them off. We can't get anything in there that's big enough to snip them, and we're, un we're reluctant to undo these threads, cut them short, and put them back in again, because it just seems more trouble than it's worth. They're really quite... They, I mean, I can do this. It's not, it's not a safety hazard. And so, on our robot, they're concealed anyway. Yes, so. they're completely concealed. With they, We've got the chassis of the machine and the armour of the robot, and that's why we've made them this wide. It so happens that 5 centimeter wide tread fits really nicely in our machine. And so later that century, we now have a complete set from this original nylon wheel to our set of robot wheels.